Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to present you something new. In this video, I'm reviewing the LXR02 from Erica Synth and Sonic Potions. And before I say something else, I just switch it on. Okay. And. Da -da -da. It's alive. It's loading a project. Okay, what is it? It's a digital drum synth with three drum voices, which are the same. Uh, there's a snare voice, there's a clap and cymbal voice, and um, a A, B, closed and open hi-hat, which basically they share the same voice. They share the same sound, but oh, there's a bit, little bit of a difference. This one has pulse width modulation, that one doesn't. The first three drums are basically the same. It's an oscillator which determines the tone rate in different waves. What do we have? Sine, triangle, so re uh, rectangular. Rectangular, yeah, so try. noise and pulse width modulation for the rectangular. And the pitch envelope with a second destination, a frequency modulation, um, a transient. A filter with very many different modes, um, low pass, high band pass, high pass, universal band pass, notch, and different, and peak, and different others, others, <laughs> an LFO, and a mix, and um, this is the normal drum sound. Before I talk more about the theory, I'm gonna press play, and I guess nothing's gonna happen. Yeah, let me load something so we can hear. We, we can hear the machine. Yeah, I um, I'm gonna load some. I'm gonna load a project which comes from the company Post IDMs Bained Up Hard Level Beatsies. Load pattern one play. You see, there's volume faders for all the voices, which is very very nice. I never actually had a drum machine that had those, even if I know that, uh, especially the roll-up machines all have it. And I totally get it, um, how convenient it is for, for a live show. Another pattern. Another one. Another one. Did I say it's all digital? It's just the code, it's just code running. There's no analog electricity um, um, actually making the sound, it's a chip. And I think it's pretty obvious that you hear that immediately. I mean, how digital can a drum, a drum synth be? It's actually, it's just like that. Mm, I like that one. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the hardware. As you see, it's quite tiny. It's like pretty much the palm of two hands. Mm, at the back, there's the, of course, the power connector. There's an analog clock in and out and a reset in. All the data is stored on the SD card. The USB is basically a MIDI connection, use MIDI over USB connection, two real size MIDI ports and two pairs of output and a phone, a mini jack phone. It, um, I found the phones very, very loud, while the main out and out two aren't too heavy in voltage output. So there's this one data encryption knob. I don't know if the original LXR ha had this. The idea of having four parameters underneath, uh, let me switch to that mode, um, underneath every page, that's basically the original LXR. What is different to the original are those volume knobs. Oh, and I, uh, I, I'm, I moved in. <laughs> Mr. Director is complaining. Um, yeah, so the idea is, of course, play record um, for encoders. I, I think it's it's actually quite obvious what the machine is supposed to do. When I switched it on the first time, it was quite difficult to immediately play just a drum sound because what you have to do beforehand is switch to performance mode and then 
when you play one of those drum one two three snare clap uh, when you play one of those nothing's happened nothing happens why because the roll parameter is on 16th that means it plays 16th unfortunately it's not more it can do less fourth and half and one and whatever and um, one each bar so there's no triplets or 30 seconds or something Unfortunately, so what you have to do is you have to switch to one and then uh, You should be able to play why is the drum not playing oh, There it is Okay, so there's two modes the so-called performance mode where you can roll and play and then there's this morph button which I come back to later but you cannot tweak the sound when you're in the performance mode. So this is something which I don't actually understand because when I like want to design a drum sound, I would love to just play it here and then, okay, it, I need it louder. Okay, then I, what I have to do is I need to, I switch, I have to switch back to the voice mode, then go to the mix menu um, and crank up the volume and then, was it loud enough? Yeah, it was okay. So this is one thing which was quite obvious right from the beginning. The, um, the usability is a little bit like um, you have to go over the edge to reach a certain point where other machines are very obvious and here it isn't. Also, only in the voice mode you can um, reach the sequencer, which has four bars maximum um, with 16 steps. Of course, you can have different lengths per track and it's seven tracks even when it's like six and a half instruments like um, closed and open height are this, uh, basically the same but they have a they have a different sequencer line um, in the mix menu you can um, dial in the length of the sequencer track so when it's like one that's what it does right the sequencer can record some type of automation, so if I press record and then let's say I go with the, um, the, 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 the tuning. Unfortunately it's not a, it's not a um, rounded curve, it's, it's only a parameter per step, so it's jumping and there's no way around, it's always jumping, which is a bit, um, I usually want to have both options at least. But yeah, that's the way it is. So if you want to, um, if you want to program a automation, it's in the second voice mode. So you have to press twice, right? Here you can go into the sound engine, and if you press the second time, you have the note parameters. And here are two the two modulation lanes, uh, automation lanes with destination. Wait, yeah, parameter four voice to it's basically all parameters can be automated but again it's one parameter per step it's not a smooth one okay let's use the second drum sound and make a bass drum out of it oh by the way it's a stereo machine as you hear yeah and every instrument has a sample rate reducer and a drive There's a drive in the mix and there's a drive in the filter. This one's more aggressive and there's a um, there's a drive mode in the main out, which is an FX, FX um, path. Wanna hear more drive? Ouch, it's loud. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the delay effect because it's quite nice. But I was about to wait to write a bass drum. Yeah, sorry, so for being confused. Um, 
the last step can also be switched in here so it's dirty and that's why it's not it's not clear let's make it h okay Oscillator. Here we go. I need a click. No FM this time. What does FM do? What I would expect. See, it's not too dangerous. My bass drum was here. The one ring came, um, I have it since three days, I think, like I worked like six, seven hours with it, maybe eight. Um, there are a couple of inconsistencies in the interface, which I stumble over quite often. So there's this thing where the shift button leads you to load the effects, the last step, and then re the reload. Ah, yeah. Oh, no. Okay, it makes sense. Um, the shift is white and only those are white while a kit or a project you have to load via load and project and that makes sense even if I would say why not also loading this via shift and also the first touch I had was um, a different set of of presets Eric has sent, sent me a new one and um, those Fast for me, performance mode. Voice. And if I remove the drive from any of those.
that's dry without any tube saturation. And it's it's really it's really really cool. I really like it. Let me mute those. Oh, and then yeah, there's also an, um, it's also a bit weird when you're in performance mode. Then the mute buttons they are um, the other way around. So it's if you wanna no. Basically, you can mute directly, and when you're in the voice mode, you can only mute via shift. Anyway. So really, the, the sound engine itself, I really, really like it. I think it's powerful, and um, I can imagine that using the, the, different, um, the different distortion modes and shapers kind of brought them a little bit into volume issues, because it's, I mean, it's much louder as soon as you apply the tube saturation, which makes sense, but... Okay, there's this thing called Morph. Mm, when you're in performance mode, you can you have to load Morph, and what it does is you can um, like determine another kit, like another sound set. For example, the clickety hack to Udus Mike Robovax, 8-bit, warm tube, clickety, VHS, free q for clunk, Atari, Stilbor, Junglist. Um, submarine sounds good. Performance mode. So here's this parameter sound morph. When I and the good thing is you can switch to voice mode and just tweak the engine the way you want. Where's the sound? Ah, it's the bass drum, okay. Probably no. What what is making that strange sound? Now let's morph back. Where's the bass gone? I have no idea. Let's reload. So you see, um, once you get around those little, let's say, um, inconsistencies, at least I feel them, I would say, why not, why not use shift for all of those kits? Why not? I mean, it, it could be both, right? Hmm. Maybe not. Maybe it's me. Maybe I just want to complain. Um, as soon as you kind of um, jump over the first cur learning curve, it's, uh, it's quite a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm going to show you the, um, some more about the engine and the possibilities, because especially the, the snare and clap sounds have something special to it, I think. So I load, no, not the pattern, I load a project. An empty project. Is it empty? Yeah, those are the main sounds. And again, I would like to tweak them while I play. Also, of course, they're not velocity responsive here. They can be from the outside, I think. So what I have to do is, um, I have to program a snare, and then I can show you how to tweak the sound, which is a shame, really. Please, in the next update, allow me to, allow me to go into those menus while I'm in performance mode. Why not? What's the problem? Um, okay, it's near two and four and a bass drum here. Okay, let's make it simple. Mm, yeah, that's very simple. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, because this snare, the envelope, 
the volume envelope has this parameter that is called repeat. And you can have very many repeats. And of course this sounds shit, but if you're like, let's say three, Okay, and uh, also something about the sequencer, there's no micro timing. It's just, it's, it is what it is. It is either a stamp or it isn't. There's shuffle, yeah, but you cannot like move one step a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. If I got it right, the original LXR has this functionality here. They, they ditched it. They said, nah, we're making noise. We're not using those tiny micro timing stuff. No one needs that. I think I, I would have needed it. Okay, then the click. Unfortunately, the click isn't re-triggered by the audio envelope, by the AEG. And then the only the noise is filtered, not the, on, uh, we're talking about the snare sound. Only the noise is filtered, not the basic tone. And here you can mix between the noise and the, the basic tone. There's no FM on the snare sound. Let's see if I can route the mod envelope to the filter mix uh, velocity destination. Ah, velocity destination. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I haven't talked about this mode. And then I, th I think we're coming to some, some kind of end. If you press voice twice, then you see this is blinking. And here you can um, have, you, we have note probability. There's a note pitch, which reacts immediately and the velocity per step. Don't hear this because I have a velocity responsiveness styled in, and I. Oh no, we hear. It. No, we don't. <laughs> okay. Also, the LFO can be rooted to the um, master effects or to. If I got it right here, the voice means um, it's each voice has one LFO, but it's not necessarily dependent on which voice is chosen. So you can use the LFO from voice four in voice, no, the, 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 um, the uh, you can use the, you can use the LFO from voice six in voice four, for example. So this is confusing, yeah. And you can also use this and LFO from voice six while dialing it in in voice four for the master out. So here it becomes a bit confusing, but it in the end, it's not a, a, a modulation matrix with 16 lines of possibilities. It's still, everything's quite simple. Another one, the clap is basically the same as the snare with the repeat functionality on its um, envelope, but the FM sound is different. Because it has two modulators for the main tone. I think it's noise, that's what, oh, oh, ah, ah, ah. So those are two modulators, each with their gain settings. And the waveform, this is the triangle.
yeah. Did I forget something? Uh, there's a song mode with which I barely understand. Uh, okay, no, I can load, wait, voice. Oh, yeah. I think it works like you, you can um, put in patterns and then you can say, wait, wait, no. Yeah, pattern. I forgot, I forgot how it works, but it works and, uh, yeah, you can um, like uh, make a list of patterns that it's going to play after each other and then you also can say, okay, it's going to end the song and it's going to stop or it's going to jump into the, uh, into the beginning. That, of course, gives you the possibility to go much longer than the maximum length of the sequencer four times, but then you just program the next sequence with the same kit and um, uh, glue it after that one and uh, you can loop that and make something very complicated with it if you feel like ah, I want to show you some more sounds unfortunately I haven't programmed too much um, so we go to the ones that come with it third level it's banged up mm -hmm. those are the dubby ones oh, yeah can I, I, um, I can show you the effects at the end the master effects are basically nothing else than the, the aggressive drive, a ring mod, a compressor that has quite a lot of punch, and the delay. Here it's the delay. And what happens if I press play? Let's see where I can morph to. I have to load the morph kit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also something I have to, um, I would guess that the engine is allowed to be louder than the max output from the converters. It feels like there are some, um, there are, you, you can overdrive the machine internally, the engine, and then it's like more, it's, it's, uh, in, it's an inter internal clipping, which is weird because usually I would suppose that a, I would think that a manufacturer says, okay, I'm not, if you want to apply um, distortion, you can do it via a parameter, but the engine itself is always like um, far away from the actual clipping, but um, here it isn't. So it's probably by purpose made for clipping even before the output. You get me? You, get, you know what I mean? So it's, um, I, I don't know if it's, it's probably Erica Synth that said, let's make it dirty. My conclusion. I have a weakness for digital drum synthesizers. Like I have an open eye for those. That's why I was a bit excited when I saw the news and I, um, I'm very happy that I can review it here and that I can have my hands on it. Um, it's a little bit more on the rough side. It's basically the opposite from the MFB Tanzbear, which is a very round and warm tone. And that's basically its digital cousin, but the, um, the angry one. Still, it has the possibility to spit out something very clean while it's still very powerful. It's not thin and digital in the sense that it's thin, not necessarily. Um, on the market, there aren't too many real digital drum synths out there. There's the Modor DR2. There's the, um, of course, the models, which I, the Modor, I haven't used the Modor because it's very expensive. and. Yeah, no, because it's very expensive. The model cycles I, from Electron um, that I reviewed earlier, um, I still, no, I sold it because in the end it was a bit too thin. The output was too thin for me somewhat. Then 
you can use the digitone. I got one machine down there. You can use the digitone as a drum synth, and it's quite powerful even when the limitation to four sounds um, makes it a bit complicated to be fast in sound, in, in, in groove programming, and also in performing. So it's not, unfortunately, it's not the. It's it's quite clear that they designed it as a synthesizer and not as a drum synth. I. I'm quite happy that um, a machine like that is on the market and I'm pretty sure very many people can use it and find a way of performing with it very, very impressively. It's still like one niche of sound, I would say. It's for the one seeking for noisy and um, interesting sounds, but on the aggressive side. Yeah, there's really nothing more to say about it, but um, as, um, I like the bass drums, even if I haven't shown you one that is impressive. It takes a bit of time to get the right parameters. Um, I like the aesthetics. I could imagine having it in my studio and using it from time to time, not every day. Oh, and I would love to do a techno live set with it, with another guy doing some Melodic stuff, whatever, and I'm gonna.
<sighs> oh, that one. Which one is it? It's just running. It's a tone. <laughs>